well, what we got over here we got dandelion we got um wood sorrow which is kind of like a replica it's not a uh clover but it's um another species of clover which is really delicious it has like a lemon lime flavor and then got like radish flowers there's no flowers blooming but you got the leaves itself that, that are really good and you got some peppers you got some rosemary you got a loquat tree and uh, you got some aloe vera for sunburns because sunburn really easy that shit sucks these are really and these are just like a nuisance weed but they're so delicious and you got their roots you can make like a substitute for coffee out of them you got chickweed over here yeah they're just it's crazy what like naturally growing like i didn't plant any of this it just came up just kind of like blue blue in the yard <laughs> and it's like rad a lot of people will just put pesticides and stuff on this stuff but yeah it's it's good it's good there's a lot of things behind here and you got a lemon tree you got an orange tree back behind there and yeah it's kind of fun a little a little fun project before you get out of here you got peppermint over there it's yeah you got a different species of banana tree um gosh and there's always different like fungi popping up some that are edible some that are not depending on what season and really good stuff and it's like before all the work that was done here stuff was like flourishing like all out it's an abundance now that we just got this little section i mean look at these things dude i mean that's that's a beast It's really good. It's like tasting like a lemon. It's delicious. <laughs> you just come back here and munch on. And you get like, you feel energy, you know, right off the bat, which is good. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. We had some peppers, we had some habaneros, and we had some ghost peppers. So this is like a substitute for radish. I mean, when the flowers are blooming, that stuff is really vibrant, delicious. So are these, though. You can make salads out of these. There's no difference between, like, taking a bite out of a radish than these. It's just a wild one. So good. Dude, that's so... Yeah, there's... We've got, like, a different type of banana tree. It doesn't produce bananas, but we got a little loquat. It's like those miniature tangerine um, that are really good. You can just eat the peel and all that, which is really good. Yeah, just delicious. Really nutritious. Rosemary is a plus. Every backyard should have rosemary bush. The steaks and yeah, zest that shit up. <laughs> it's good. And we have this thing for a while, power washer. I'm like, fuck, dude, bring this out to skate spots and whatever's you know broken up or the sidewalks you know cracked up or whatever you're dealing with circumstances wise to make a spot skatable this thing will definitely blast the shit out of it or a spot's too waxy it's like clear it out and start over again this thing's good have this for a little bit it's rented but i'm like you know i might take this thing put it in the trunk and go out and try to make some spots more skatable <laughs> he was like tripping out all this stuff i was like really dude like I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Let me go see what I got. Got a fucking shit show garage. And this is like the anxiety part of like moving. It was just like, my dad is such a organized hoarder. There's so much shit back here. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, let's see what we got here. We might have some. Damn. I think these were some of my first trucks. 28 years ago. 29. Damn, there's a lot of stuff in here. Silvers, Indies, I'm pawn Indies. I think I have some like relic wheels that are like size 30 that were like my first set of wheels. But, yeah, there's a ton of shit in here. 
Damn, these things are back. I'm gonna try these things out. Yeah, all a lot of this is just like fucking skate shit. Uh, there's a, mid moving, you'll have a lot of shit that you don't even realize you have. That's the crazy part about this. Damn. All my D DV tapes logged. It's like, that's a trip. I haven't even been into this thing. It's just packed. The bomb right there. <laughs> This is rad. Except drive video. There's a bunch of DVDs. Mags. Bliss. Bliss mag was cool. That was sick. Bunch of books. Oh my gosh, I have so much shit. Oh, I gotta take this to storage anyway, so. Should have seen it before all this shit was packed. You'd be like, what the fuck? That's a bummer. <laughs> it's like, best video? Best video. Keep holding that out. That's like, what up, PJ? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> You guess who that is? Drew this in the uh, high school. Smolik. <laughs> Tail slide. This was gonna be my high school actually until we moved back up to North County. This bank was steep and sketchy. Always inspiring. Wow, dude. Yeah, there's a. Dude, there's so much shit in here. I start digging through like the photo albums. That's so much stuff. All these are all videos, DVDs. Oh, I got some more. There we go. Let's check this one out. Oh, what do we know? Back to back. That a bunch of old, older ones. On video, sheep video. One fifty one was sick. It's just crazy. That's just like I don't even know, like just a fraction of the videos I have. There's probably like 30 more boxes of these things. You got this, that, some are in storage. How long are you, how, how long have you been collecting videos? How many videos do you think you I've been have? collecting videos from the, from the day, the first one I seen, I think that was, um, it's like second, virtual reality or second and smoke. I mean, I seen H Street videos prior to that, but the second and smoke and the plan B videos are what really inspired me. Kind of got me more into skating. And uh, so, oh my gosh, yeah, for 20, 27 years and collecting videos and still do to this day. I love it. I always get like homies, oh, let me buy this. I'm like, oh man, this is like, it's like, there's, it's all memorabilia. This shit means a lot to me. You go back, you know, and think back of how much inspiration and stuff you got from these videos, which is sick. So I'm just waiting for, you know, when move somewhere else from here to have, you know, have them on display. So people walk in and be like, what? Like, I can tell you about every video, every trick, who's who. <laughs> it goes like, 
I watch a lot of videos like religiously. That's been like a big portion of my push through skateboarding, you know, and then getting to meet, you know, some of your so-called idols, you know, when you grow up, which is like pretty rad. I always bring it up to like a lot of my friends, like, dude, first video watched you was like, you know, I'm like 98, 99, and they're like, what? They don't even remember it, and I can remember every detail of their part, everything. They're like, I don't remember that. I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, I got a good memory. Just the way it is. How long have you been collecting videos? How many videos do you think? I've been collecting videos from the from the day, the first one I seen, I think that was, um, it's like second, virtual reality or second and smoke. I mean, I seen H Street videos prior to that, but the second and smoke and the plan B videos are what really inspired me, kind of got me more into skating. And uh, so, oh my gosh, yeah, for 20, 27 years and collecting videos and still do to this day. I love it. I always get like homies, oh, let me buy this. I'm like, oh man, this is like, it's like, there's, it's all memorabilia. This shit means a lot to me. Just like a little colorway sample. Whenever it came yeah, out. Yeah, all that still seems. It's kind of like the package thing with them. The shoes and board. Actually, they weren't too bad. And you got the double stitching and got like a thick tongue. It's like that, how people used to do the double tongues. It's just a trip. It's okay. so It's like, I think it was like 14, 15 years. There's like, yeah, there's so much footage in here. Another thing, I want to like transfer all this stuff to like at least DVD or something. Because it's like, it makes you think like, how long do VHSs last? What's their lifespan? I always trip out. I always get like sketched. So I take pretty good care of these ones. Like there's just so many, so much footage. More. I remember just like sending these out just wherever. <laughs> Tell kids what these are, dude. They don't know. Yeah, they don't even know VHS, huh? So these are just like all, you know, filming on a high eight or, um, yeah, or uh, uh, as things got, you know, grown more of VX, but it's basically all high eight, all high eight tapes and then. You go and edit through your VCR to make clips. So each clip has like a gap because it's so hard. Or you go in and like edit and you delete sh shit you work so hard for. So I don't know, like to go back and like always look and watch these things. It's like, man, this, this is where, yeah, this stuff yeah. sticks. This one is dope. This one's, oh, look at Yellow America. It's a good one. Mouse. Game changer. Definitely a game changer. Shit's already falling. And then uh, as you get more into it, you got all like the homie videos. So these are all the homie videos. Dozens and dozens. <laughs> Sponsor me tapes. <laughs> oh, that shit's a trip. Oh, trip. Tell them what a sponsor me tape is though. Like you said, you used to send these to kids now, they just got Instagram. Yeah, and that's their, yeah. It's like nowadays, Instagram is like the sponsor me tape for a lot of kids that are coming up and, and growing and want to pursue skateboarding. Like back then, or back then when these things, you know, existed, it's like you go film whatever, your homie's cameras or your parents' camera or whoever had a camera you'd be with. So it'd be like, you know, a big squad of 15, 20 people wanting to do the same thing. So you just, learn to work things out and um, film each other. And then you get back home and go through like f how many tapes you, you went through that day, like four, four to six tapes. You go back and just like back forward, you go on the VCR, you know, 
line things up there, record, pause, record. And then from there you'd make, yeah, your sponsor video. And then whoever, you know, what brands you were stoked on back then, you'd send them to. And the whole fact was like, you, you kind of knew you would never like hear anything, but it, it's still, it's still the fact you went out, you know, you went forward and you just love what you do and just send them just to, you just want someone to watch it other than your friends, which was like a really cool part of it. And, and uh, have these things all these years, you know, later, which, you know, kind of is cool to look back on, you know, my address, like phone number, capital original copy. <laughs> There's so many of these and each tape is different. Like I would, I remember like watching some of these and you go through the tapes and it's like, oh, wow, this one has four or five more new tricks on it because you'd go back. <laughs> So it's like things got so scattered there. So it's really hard to keep up with like, all right, what's the original one? What's the one that you actually sent? But you would always be out filming and skating and wanting to add, oh, I want to add this to the VHS or, you know, or something to send out. So it's like you send one out and they're like, oh, well, I got five or seven new clips. I'm going to send, send this out too. So it's like back to back. You send these guys out a bunch of clips. It's pretty rad. I'm like, this is homies videos things like an hour. This is a really good video. Like all, oh, all the OG like Encinitas homies and a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends who've, you know, are, you know, where they should be cause they work so hard. Um, and they came up too. So it's really rad to have these. And the goal is to transfer, transfer the VHS on DVD so I can start sending, you know, my friends out. I'm the only one that has a lot of these copies because everyone else kind of just didn't give a shit. And uh, first video I've ever filmed on VHS, the news cam cameras with the VHS camcorder. <laughs> you stick in the VHS and you just film from there. So this is like two hours of just nonsense. But it's like the first experience I had filming. What is this one? Look, it says issue one, <laughs> Bronson. <laughs> So you're talking about like 94, 95. It's crazy. I haven't even seen this until right now. That's, that's a trip. It was all about labeling them right. It was all about like, all right, got to label these right so they stand out and you don't lose, you know, track. This is like a bunch of raw footage. This is more, yeah, this is more newer. So this is 2003. So my like DNA part on there, a bunch of San Diego, um, you know, footage, which another thing would be rad to go there and, and uh, show you around that school. You'll recognize all the spots for sure. And uh, yeah, this is all chopped up new footage and then that DNA part. So yeah, 2003, still a long time ago. It's crazy. Like all my phone numbers changed. It's like carbon. Friend, my friend Dana Shaw, Carbon Video. He uh, is a good filmer, uh, filmmaker nowadays, so he's, yeah, he's killing it. So it's really rad to have his, this thing's like pristine. I don't even think he has a copy. So it's like another thing that I got to transfer this stuff so I can get everyone a copy. I'm like the only one that kept anything. <laughs> Hence, Video Hoarder. <laughs> so I, I just love it. I love skateboarding. Pretty sick. Yeah, there's this, man, there's this like ever going. This is this one box. There's so many other boxes of just homey videos and LA missions and, you know, anything goes. Another homey video, anything goes. That one was good. It's like an hour long. A lot of my friends. Yeah, some of them still skate, some of them don't. It's like, it's a trip. All good people I'm still friends with. Rad. Dude, there's so much. It's all right, dude. It's hard, <laughs> hard to move around out here. But yeah, there's this. There's so much. Man, you had to hop like a barbed wire fence and going in there. First time I'd hear all the skate sounds and I'd go in and the entire. It was like the first time I was ever. Well, only the entire place was hotboxed. It was like all the invisible dudes. 
everyone. I mean, this building was huge. All these makeshift like ramps and flat bars and just all this stuff of all the OGs. I remember seeing Penny in there one time too, like back in the day. And like, that was like the hub because it was right next to Earl Warren where Penny had that downhill school line at the end, like that, you know, that iconic line you filmed. So I was down the street and the, block, and the EG blocks were in between. So you had Capra or the EG blocks were at the end. Capra was in between. So we'd always go there and then ended up, they had to shut down the place because some lady, I guess was, <laughs> was making a meth lab in there so we'd always smell this you know like chemicals and all this weird sound and I mean the place you would want to roll to with a couple people because it was kind of like a gang infested area back in the day and people would go there and like you know fuck with other people and I remember going in there and uh hearing about it and then the cops like cops came like basically the feds came in all angles like what's going on and they just went right past us up and then upstairs and a lot of the place we haven't explored because it was that eerie and just just yeah you didn't want to get you know get caught up so it ended up being a lady like had a full-blown like meth lab out of there like and that place got shut down afterwards and it lasted maybe like four or five years and that was another experience of the first time really filming with anyone is like OG homies that were like way older, you know, than I was. And um, yeah, just filming, filming out in that warehouse, you know, things would be like falling in mid session because it was like <laughs> disintegrating, like everything was just falling apart. But it was rad to go in there and just like seeing some of the first pros for my first time spot for years. But yeah, that blew it out, just super sus. But yeah, I would just go in there and like hammers and nails and just build shit like all day you just hung out and just build stuff but i remember that place being like completely hot box like oh this is uncomfortable <laughs> it's like fully like when i was like 14 or something 13 but uh we went back to war and came back later and it was all cool but when you were skating there with like a couple people it was eerie like it was an eerie spot like just something about it the energy there and everything was just there's some shit from the past, like lurking around. A lot of gangs too. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a trip. And like another warehouse too, it was like right by there. I remember skating, I remember going there and like seeing Cole and a couple other people like skating there. And it was like right where like Poods Park was built. And that was like, it was a, like all these greenhouses and then someone bought out the land to start where the park is now. So we had the, had these warehouses to ourselves to build stuff. And I remember skating there at like six at night and it was just kind of like, kind of similar to Cape Row was, you know, had the similarities. And all of a sudden there's people bashing through the walls with machetes. So there's like machetes just slicing through these like thin metal walls and we were freaking out. And we were like, what should we do? We were like running. It was like around getting dark. So we we're like, what should we do? So there was like another, like um, there was like a staircase and like this upstairs, like little place. So you can kind of see what's going on. So we all went up there like, what the hell's going on? And we ran out and it ended up being like some super sus dudes just fucking with us and didn't want us to be there. But there was, there was like five of them. So all angles, you just see like machetes going through the, walls not knowing like oh my god this is like a scene from like the shining or it or something <laughs> it's like so sketchy but now where that place is is where poods park and the whole community park is so we'll most likely like end up there too so it's like background history of it is pretty incredible and then uh yeah my friend alex passed away in there rest in peace alex and uh yeah it's place has a lot of a lot of good memories and a lot of crazy memories. It's like, yeah, it's a trip. Yeah. Do this, because there's like so much, like, yeah, just so much to talk about. Um, and I, I, have you ever been to San Diego? Oh. No, it's all good. This won't even be audio. This is just going to be stickers. Yeah, how sick is this shit? But no, I haven't. Is it a park? No, it's a school. They'll recognize, like, that um that famous hallway tents there 
Everyone skated penny, switch flip, switch front side flip. Oh yeah. I was th I was there that night too. Like as a kid, like 15, man, like just mind blown. Wow, man. that's 